Hey friends, welcome back to the Performance Plus Podcast. I am Coach Johnny. I am your host today. I am joined by Pamela, the one and only lovely Pamela, who's uh, in a, you said, a grandma cottage? Yeah, well, it's a lake house, so I'm in a rocking chair, so it looks like I'm really older than I am. <laughs> oh, awesome. And then for the first time ever, we are joined by a special guest. Uh, we've never had a guest on the podcast, so we figured we get the best thing to come out of Chattanooga since a moon pie. <laughs> Jake Locker, uh, director of Mayhem Nation, is on the podcast with us today. So, Jake, Hope thank you for doing No, Jake's from Chattanooga. I oh, I was like, oh, you misspoke. Good job, Johnny. I didn't know you knew that. I love Chattanooga. As much as I love Cookville, Chattanooga is only one of the only maybe better places than Cookville. So, good fact. And it is a moon pies and Coca Cola. Moon pie, it's moon pies and RC Cola, right? Like, people are into that there. Yeah, probably. This is the first bottling plant for uh, Coca-Cola in the U.S. And my dad actually worked at it for like 20, 25 years. So they're known for that. Moon Pies and I think uh, Crystal has like a headquarters or something. But it's a great city for other reasons, too. I'm glad I said that because people would have maybe just like I thought. I was like, oh, we misspoke and it was supposed to be out of Cookville. But Chattanooga, I didn't know that. OK, so good. I love Chattanooga. It's an awesome city. I yeah. am from that town, but I do live in Cookville now. So, uh, yeah, we go back a lot. My whole family's there. Um, and then we're doing Iron Man there September 24th. We got a crew going down for it. Okay. So I'm doing back, I, I'm back. doing the same race as you. You're doing Iron Man? I'm doing Iron Man September 24th at Chattanooga. Absolutely. Let's go, Johnny. Dude, I can't wait. This is. Uh, I'm going to add you to the right after this. Dude, let's get. Who else is doing it? And are you guys losing all of your fitness gains from training for an Ironman? Uh, one, we've got that you would know. We've got about 10 to 12 of us, I think. Most of it's just average fitness, not like games athletes. we got me, Jason Grubb, Rory McKernan, Mayhem Zalari, I think. Uh, shoot, who else in there? We had another couple of Masters athletes. There's some Mayhem Masters doing it, like local. Um, Chris Berry was, but he tore his shoulder up. And then... I'm like training minimally. I'm just biking like some because I've been on the bike. But other than that, I'm still doing man athlete. And then like I'm doing 75 hard right now. So my outside workout will be like a 30 minute bike and 15 minute jog. Um, so very minimal Ironman training. But uh, <laughs> Pamela, you want to join us? You want to do um, your first let me think. Ever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought you hung up your... Um... Your Iron Man sword, Johnny. After I saw you, like to he was like emaciated the last time he trained for an Iron Man. I was like, dude, you got to put on some muscle. I, I said I was, and then uh, I got I got like a a free entry into that race, and I was like, I have to do it. Like I have some uh, some bad times to avenge out there, and so I'm going for it. But I'm not going. I'm like Jake, I'm not doing an Ironman program this time. I'm just uh, fitnessing and then adding some accessory biking, running and swimming into my life. Um, just, uh, just to try and maintain like some semblance of health, because you get pretty unhealthy if you go full send on the, the Ironman training. So um, well, I can attest to mayhem athlete, because I follow the masters, um, preparing me for the unknown and unknowable because I just entered my first bike race. It was only 21 miles, but I also did 50 miles on my own and I legit don't bike. And I felt amazing the next day. Um, it downpoured for like an hour of the hour and a half of like the 21 mile, um, and the 50 mile, um, great weather, but, um, yeah. So I felt like I was prepared, even though I wasn't doing the exact sport. And you did no accessory biking? No, zero. That's, a lot. that's dope. Yep. Uh-huh. It's really fun. Jake, that's a good segue into talking about uh, Mayhem Athlete and all the programs you guys offer. Um, your official title is director, right? So if you could give our our subscribers and listeners, uh, like, what does that mean as far as your involvement in Mayhem? Um, yeah, we'll start with that. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm director of Mayhem Athlete. Been that for four or five years. Actually, beginning of this year, I've also had on uh, responsibility and role of president of Mayhem Nation. So it uh, encompasses more now, but focus is still Mayhem Athlete. So oversee everything Mayhem related online, whether it's perils, Buffalo Brew, some event stuff, and then 
Vegas focused man athlete. Uh, what that looks like is oversee all the tracks programming promotion uh, of that entity with ma'am athlete we have uh really three packages we have gym programming ma'am affiliate we're in over i think we just eclipsed 1500 gems which is really cool uh yeah. christy Darren lead that up uh that's awesome they grow in tons of gems everywhere doing it uh then we got our competitor package which people probably think of a lot like rich working out the games athletes here that's really designed for games and semifinal athletes um Within that, you get all our tracks with a competitor package. And then our everyday athlete package uh, is a little bit uh, more affordable and includes like your 30 minute, 60 minute, your scale, the bodybuilding, um, and everyday hero. That's like, hey, I work at home or in a garage. And so I program the base for what we call as compete. Uh, me and Darren do the bulk of that. Rich helps some too. And workouts Rich does we include as well. And then format the season based off that. And then like the main workout from that day kind of trends through all our programs whether it's like the body weight or the 60 or the like i say everyday hero like the the styles might change the exact equipment and all that but we try to keep that core workout through all of it um that's what it looks like every day come man athlete that way if you're doing the 30 minute one or the hardest version or whatever you're all kind of doing the same thing um but i do oversee all the tracks i don't program for them all i have a really really good team i try to remember to do that all the time like i need to praise them even more uh, because they do an awesome job because I can trust them because I can't program like 10 or 11 tracks <laughs> add more in the future. Uh, but I try to oversee it all. I'll keep it very mayhem at its core. When you see ma'am athlete after a while, you're like, oh, that just looks like mayhem. That's what we want. Um, we do think we're the best, most effective fitness program in the world to get people really fit or just get them moving. So ma'am athletes, our spectrum is growing a lot, but it's, at its core, we do do CrossFit functional fitness. Um, we're just trying to get more on the just expand our reach with our target audiences and what we do as well, while still being the most elite competitive programming entity uh, in the CrossFit world. Um, I hope that that t- details a lot of it. Uh, I'll mention too, we're starting to grow Mayhem ID, which is individualized programming um, to help those that want like a ton of one-on-one attention. It's also helped continue to us to send the most athletes to semifinals and the games each year. Or those just beginner the beginners are like, hey, I really want someone every day to tell me exactly what to do. So we got that as well. Um, yeah, and Mayhem, our faith, family, fitness service is our four core values. We're starting to uh, really define to like our core business and those things. But it gives a pretty broad overview of what Mayhem Athlete is. I had like six questions that I needed answered by you jotted down. You covered them all in that. So well done. Is that rehearsed or is that just like I'm so dialed into what I'm doing every day that I know it? I guess it's just practice and we do it every day. That is literally okay. we do. People ask me what I do every day. It's kind of funny because it's hard to explain if you're not like into CrossFit at all or fitness. Um, when you are, it's easier. But lately I've just been saying I'm a professional emailer. I uh, <laughs> email way more than I'd ever want to, which is a necessary just thing that you have to do when you're yeah in this role. It's okay. But uh, trying to get everyone on the same threads, right, in the same direction, making because we got lots of channels lots of directions going on all at the end of the day help people do fitness better um through mayhem and we we say mayhem family a lot we do mean that um because once you're a man family we try to take care of our own um because we want mayhem to grow but also because i mean we believe in faith and that means we believe in god and who jesus is and because of that it allows us to be like hey at the end of the day it's not about us we want to do what's good for other people in the end like in business that is going to be good for you maybe not immediately may take longer but if you really care about other people put them first um while being wise like good things will happen and you'll just help more and more people along the way which helping people sounds cliche but if your heart's in the right place and you're compassionate then people take notice and so we want to keep that authenticity within mayhem athlete at, at its core because people can uh once they've been around long enough it's like okay they'll take we're going to take care of our own um and so that's a big part of us too um yeah it's faith family like our fam family here we say and we also really value like our your family like your immediate unit family mom dad kids all that uh then faith family fitness talk over that huge on fitness and then service we have a nonprofit man mission that we try to serve through gyms through organizations that we trust as well um so mayhem mayhem's reach is growing and there's a lot going on man as they say i think savon termed it the mayhem empire which i really like yeah it's, it's legit but uh the mayhem empire is a, is a thing and we term it mayhem family, but uh, yeah. 
I have a, a great story of like my first encounter with Jake. So, um, and it really does tie into like the family feel of things. So um, when I contacted you, Jake, I had been following Mayhem Masters for quite a while. And the athletes that were doing it at my gym were, you know, struggling with gymnastics. And I was like, you know what? I would love to help like the Mayhem athletes get better at gymnastics, right? So I contact Jake and he's like, sure, you know, would love to just chat, see what's up. So me being like total type A, I'm like type out like a whole like PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and so I walk into Mayhem, um, into, um, you know, the gym and um, it's first of all, an amazing space. And um, so I walk in and you and Rory meet me and you're like, Hey, let's just like meet, you know, pull up some benches, like, you know, like that we would like bench press on. And I'm like, this is amazing. It's like so casual. Like I felt like I was at home. Like I was just talking to like good friends who really were like, um, also passionate about helping people. Right. It wasn't really about like the money side of it. It was like, how can we help our community more? Um, but I whip out the presentation, the PowerPoint and you guys are like, Oh, she's organized. <laughs> 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 it was so great. And I was like, I don't have to like show you through this. <laughs> like, That's a great and presentation. Like, and we just chatted like we had known each other for a long time. And so it, I did feel right at home. So you guys did make me feel like family. So <laughs> good. I remember when you came, well, we'd been looking to start Mayhem Gymnastics. It was like the next one that made sense with a subject matter expert. And like, this is a hole we need to fill. Um, we had talked to another uh, person really respect them their entity just wasn't going to work out and then you emailed like the perfect time I was like yes and she's a man master and she's like it's and I was aware but I really know who you were Pamela and then once I dug in I was like oh no brainer uh yeah. so the, I remember the presentation was like you can do this <laughs> I have to but uh I'm glad you did and the fit was so cool because yeah you were a mayhem master which was really cool too mm -hmm. um that was a good that was really good I wish was that it was that organic and easy and like yeah uh, Bit. Was there any chance you weren't going to hire her to do it when you guys met? Or are you just like, like, what was your like standard uh, for her? To do the job? Way she wouldn't have been hired as she was just like super crazy or weird when she <laughs> got here. <laughs> Something <laughs> odd like that. No. Yeah. She was for sure hired when she got here. Uh, so that was cool. It was good. We've been really lucky because our, our subject matter experts are already like part of mayhem and we just like grew into like like the bergeners we already friends with them and now we're much better than friends with them henshaw worked with rich for years um kelly sir did too um and now we got performance plus as well on so it's really cool and all you guys were doing mayhem which is neat and uh, like we didn't it's just kind of like oh this makes sense let's just do this and make it bigger and better how do you how do you synthesize all of that data together, like the subject matter experts along with all the programming? Like, is that a complex process for you? Yeah, it's pretty. Yes, it's complex. So I've gotten much better. Now we have like, I there's a programming overview which tells us what cycle we're in. And like the next cycle is Hulk out, and so now we've kind of got blocked out the whole year. Like two years ago, it wasn't blocked out as well as it probably should have been. Uh, which made it more complicated when you're going and like, okay, what are we doing? Um, like we knew what we were going to do as a whole, but like it wasn't as detailed and like flowed into it. Uh, we had to just create it. So now we have that made. It's so, like next week Hulk out starts. So like everyone, like in order to strength, if you're open to quarterfinals athlete or if you're just general fitness person, um, the aerobic work. And then Pamela, we were literally emailing earlier, like, hey, our next, we've got Murph prep coming up because we're now we're doing that for Murph. So pushing and pulling, push up, uh, strict pull up. And then after that, uh, I think we're going to probably work on some handstand work and core strength in the summer. The time of the year makes sense. So, yeah, it's a lot. We piece that, layer that in with the Bergener work. And then the core Metcon every day, the flavor will change in the summer, depending on where you're at, because we just don't want to, like, run people on the ground with thrusters and burpees and chest bar pull-ups when it's, like, opens 10 months away. So they'll have their style, their fitness going on. Um, there'll be some intensity, yeah, but then the games and semifinals, like, going really hard and intense through the summer. So it is a lot of working, moving pieces. Um, you just got to stay on top of it. And again, like my team helps a ton because because there's so moving things, like we have to really catch lots of, if we didn't, there used to be more errors, just to be honest, in our programming. Not errors, just like typos or things that slip through from one workout to another. And now we have very little to none of that because of like Kelsey and Drew are on top of that. We even have an auditor that comes in, like reads every workout to make sure it's all on, like this is succinct and clear. Um, 
So yeah, it is complicated, but good teamwork, communication, and then now even better planning. Pamela's very organized, which helps. I should be more organized sometimes. I'm not like super unorganized, just when the amount of things pile up, like it has to be very organized. Otherwise it gets out of hand. So Pamela, yeah. how how hard is it for you writing the gymnastics piece in it in with what they're doing? Are there moments where you're like, ah, I would love to do this, but I can't? Um, Jake and I do have great communication of like what we want to get out of each of my cycles that I'm working on. Um, and so he will know like, hey, on Mondays, we're going to be doing a lot of upside down handstand work. So I'm not going to program like handstand pushups on that Monday because Mayhem Gymnastics is on Monday. Um, and he knows what cycle I'm in. Um, no, like I am, um, I love like, you know, Jake allows me or you allow me, Jake, to like really kind of have a free flow of what I really want to work on. So sometimes, you know, we'll add pullovers into it because I think like I, we train. Right. So like in CrossFit, I was taught train for like the RX plus. Right. The highest level and uh, not train, but um, uh, program for the highest level. And then you progress down. Right. And add options for that. So. Um, I think, you know, we really try and stick with that as well too, because mayhem does have a lot of really amazing, um, athletes that are trying to get to the next level. I'll ask both, I'll ask both of you guys this question. Sorry to cut you off, Jake. Um, how would you layer a performance plus program on top of this? Right. So I, I use VAM 60 and there's quite a, like, there's a robust amount of things to get through in a day. But if I wanted to work on chest bar pull-ups, how would you guys advise as a coach to an athlete to do that? Yeah, let me go first for me. Um, go ahead. Like, okay. <laughs> I hope you have the same answer. <laughs> no, uh, you don't ask this. So you need to work on skills. If you don't have it, obviously, like if you don't have the bar muscle up, like well, we got to really work on that skill, the technique, the progression to get that bar muscle up. And then you can do more muscle ups, maybe in a workout, you have to work on them into that. Um, so you got to establish a skill. Hence, overall, like this, I performance plus is so good with these things. Um, I would establish like one to two days a week. You're going to work on that skill, whatever it is. And like, you're probably going to work on that skill fresh. If you have like no, if you're just beginning, like you don't have the skill down at all. I tell people work on it fresh 10, 15 minutes, maybe twice a week. Um, sometimes you could have to work out once you start to get down a little bit. And then you can more layer it into your workout. So establish two days uh, with your specific question. What you say? Pull ups, Johnny? Yeah, like a chest bar pull-up. Yeah, that one. So with Mayhem, like if there's pull-ups on Wednesday and you're planning to work on it on Wednesday, then you might want to move the day you're going to work on it or modify the workout because you can't just smash yourself in the ground with tons and tons of volume of pull-ups. So it depends a little bit, but uh, I like establishing two days. You may have to uh, tweak programming just a little bit so you're not overdoing one movement or one joint. Um, and then over time, the skill will progress and like a good program like Performance Plus is going to scale you up into that movement and as you build the strength and position and technique and then like the end of maybe your six weeks you're like all right instead of wednesday's work on strict pull-ups i'm going to put these in the workout or just do the workout rx with pull-ups in them love it i like that answer <laughs> that is a good answer a lot of people for a long time so i'm glad it's like oh, okay, off. Yeah, great yeah I mean, people, good... uh, yeah go ahead people do better when they have like like you open your phone and like, here's the workout from Mayhem. And then here's the skill work that you could do from, you know, Mayhem Gymnastics Performance Plus, whatever you find. Like there's so many great programs out there, you know. Um, but yeah, like it, I always, always run into people who are like, I need to work on this, this and this. And then they do it for like one week, all five things. And then a year later, they're like, I have nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so follow something i don't care what it is from a great program just follow it you know and obviously we love our program so um you know that's why we're on here together and if you are like that's a good point like if you're starting crossfit you don't have any skills you have like 10 skills to learn we'll start with one and go from there like if you don't have a strict pull up get your strict pull up work on that six weeks and then just slowly one at a time i know that seems overwhelming and daunting when you're first starting but it's literally you can do maybe two at a time but i like that better of like Take that one skill, really hone in on it. And like, that's the one that we have the most focus. And once you establish that, then you're going to replace it with another skill to work on the most. Because I feel like that's probably a little more efficient than like each day you work on two different skills and try to cover all 10 every week. Just like dive into one for a period of time and then pull back out and dive into another. Jake, is it more daunting to learn a strict pull-up or raise three children, like three and under? 
<laughs> oh man, yeah. You don't even know. They don't even know. <laughs> Wait, how old are your kids for real? Uh Jake, my oldest, will be he's three and a half. Josiah is about to turn two. And then Nelly, we just had her as a month old. Wow. So, I mean, I give my wife uh as a rock star. Thankfully, she stay at home, but three mm-hmm. kids is harder than two. And then, but not that like, yeah, we can talk about parenting too if you want. Each kid's just harder. It's not like, you know what I mean? It's not like you go from zero kids to three kids. I heard it described recently. It's like you go from zero to one. You just add one kid at a time. So your parenting level kind of games up, levels up as your number of children levels up too, thankfully, because three is just, yeah, harder than two and three. Actually, last night, Josiah's my two-year-old. I call him the monster because he's just, he's a monster. He's like climbing all of her stuff now. Pamela, you'd like it like in the dressers and on bookshelves. Oh. Figured out how to climb out of his crib. So he's just like a hero. Boom. <laughs> and then he's <laughs> running around his room because he escaped. <laughs> you need that crib tent. That's what Nancy said. She's trying to, gosh, we got so many Amazon orders now that he's into everything. Oh, but, my uh, God. Yeah. Kids are awesome, but they work. So that's worthwhile work. For sure. What's what's worse, hurting the mayhem athletes or like the elite athletes or hurting your kids? <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> Depends on which athletes. <laughs> Let's talk gee. Yeah. He's like he probably fits in with your kids. Like he's he's so playful. Oh gosh. Yeah, Gee, Luke, and uh who else? Bailey. Yeah, they're like <laughs> I heard my kids. <laughs> they're good. Uh yeah, athletes are needy too, but it's hard to be a games athlete. So um so I take care of my athletes every day, just like we take care of our kids. Uh and yeah, sometimes they, they need a lot too, but it's good. It's worth helping them. That's awesome. Um, I have a question. This is a Zach question. And uh, so we have both heard you on Savon's podcast talking about how you guys do CrossFit, right? Like that's at the core. And you mentioned that earlier, the core mayhem is a CrossFit program. Um, you mayhem seems like the only thing that does CrossFit year round, like a lot of the other programming options out there kind of go through cycles where they cycle out CrossFit almost. Uh, how do you keep CrossFit in year round? How do you keep your programming intentional? Like right now it feels like, like yesterday's workout felt like it was intentional to gain something specific and that it was building towards something, but it wasn't losing CrossFit. Like how do you guys go about doing that? It's a good question. I think one it's, uh, like years of just doing it so experience um the more and more you do it the better you get at it especially when you're doing it with attention so you like know how to do it um two we're changing like uh like yesterday's a workout for example like we required it was a minute or two minutes of max work of dumbbell hand cleans next one's burpees next one's toes of bar but it was like you had to do it unbroken sets so we're making you work bigger chunks together which will be harder but going to almost drop the intensity um of that workout because you gotta wait till you're ready to do that that's like one example to do it that's still crossfit but it's like making you do more than usually what it wants harder on you different stimulus and then later on it'll pay off because you do bigger sets that's an idea um a couple mondays ago we did like 10 rounds of i think it was like six swings eight burpees 10 wall balls like you're never gonna stop moving in that so you're not gonna be super sore or just like smashed after but like you're gonna do some good fitness and get some good capacity work in so that's another one of like you get out of breath touch on all those movements. So you're not losing the ability to do those, or like your fitness within it, but it's not the same as if you did 75 for time of each or um, just seven minute AMRAP breakneck speed. So that's some of the ways we do that uh, today. So partner work, which is more fun, add in some duration, like today's workout. we got teams of three I'm looking at coming up. Uh, it's all machine work. So it's not going to beat you up too bad. As we increase the duration, some of these workouts intensity has a drop. But like that's where you build some of your aerobic fitness, the base that's going to pay off next season to come in. Um, our strength works to be very intentional as well. We'll do that first. So that's not CrossFit, but we're still building strength and everyone does that. But we'll do it first now. So I guess more of your focus um, and then that comes after. So partner workouts, another way to answer that. Um, stringing together bigger sets of things. Um, and then. Yeah, a lot of it's just based on feel. And like I said earlier, like we're not just going to have you, you're not going to see thrusters and chest bar pull-ups together maybe once in the next three months because, yeah, we're going to touch that some because we do do CrossFit, but it's much less on that, uh, just going to that dark place for sure. (laughs) That's awesome. And it makes me happy as somebody that follows the programming to know that that's not going to be required for a little while. 
P, how, how do you uh, train as a master's athlete? Are you following Mayhem Masters just to the T every day, or are you kind of doing your own stuff on top of it? Whoa, I'm not that old. No, sorry, I met Pamela. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm the one with like, empty, I'm the empty nester, I'm the master's. Um, so yeah, I follow Mayhem Masters every day. Um, and then I actually, um, I work in like a bulletproof shoulders 100% because I use so much shoulders um in all the gymnastics stuff I demo so I'll do like that or our last to fly anything like cycling through any of those programs to keep my shoulders healthy um but yeah I I love Mayhem Masters it's really long um and so I do have to choose some of the stuff um like you know that if I only have a limited time um but I like that there's a morning session and sometimes an afternoon session um, so if I have time to go back, I will definitely do that, but I think it's really, um, age appropriate for, you know, what I'm doing. And, um, right now I don't really have like any competitive goals other than like train for train, do mayhem masters to train for a new sport. Like, you know, if I want to cycle, um, and I do hit the 50 next year. So if I feel like I'm wanting to, you know, give it one more shot at the games, I might do that, but I have to really want that. Um, so I have so much fun. Like I, I love the Metcons, honestly, that Jake, um, has us doing. I think they're really smart. Um, it's not, I don't feel beat down, you know? That's awesome. Jake, how do you train managing all this stuff, hurting all these cats? How do you fit fitness in and which mayhem program do you follow? I do. So like two months ago with the open, I was just doing the open track with everyone. I do the workout and then the Bergener lifting after. Um, and then depend on the cycle, if I do mayhem gymnastics or not, just if I, if I had time, I do it all. Like if I didn't have, like, if I just, if I had, let me preface with that. If I had no responsibilities and unlimited time, I would do all of mayhem compete every day. That's what I would do. But, uh, near the open, I was doing that. Cause I was like, I'll train for the open. Um, just follow basically compete the open track. If I layered in some extra, I've been a little bodybuilding, now I'm doing, like I said, we're doing like a group of us. We're doing 75 hard. So I'll wake up. I'll do like a quick 30 minute bike ride, maybe 15 minute jog I'm on day five. And then this afternoon I'll do, I'm actually doing a lot of bodybuilding just because I was mentally fatigued from like hitting it hard through the open. And then it's just right now that sounds fun. So I'm doing mayhem bodybuilding. Um, and if I hit a piece, I'll just jump in with mayhem compete the regular Metcon, um, so right now I'm doing that. I'm not really lifting Olympic lifting any just to give my body a break and mind a break too. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And then on the weekends, I might hit like a big session with the athletes out there. If they're doing two or three, I might try and do that with them just to hop in with them and have fun. That awesome. is a lot. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we got some rapid fire questions for you. And then I think after that, unless Pamela, you got anything else you want to add or ask? We are good. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to ask you, ask you questions, Jake. You just got to go off the cuff. Uh, Boy, let's go. Yeah. First one, easy, better hip hop artist to work out to, Drake or Jay-Z? Gosh, uh, Jay-Z. Better shoe, froning nanos or non-froning nanos? Froning nano three is the maybe best shoe I've worn, so I'll go with that one. Okay. Better version of DT, heavy DT or double DT? Heavy. Heavy. <laughs> You too, Pamela? Yes. Oh, oh. God, he's horrible. <laughs> it's a lot more pain. It's just you can lift it. Yeah. Better cheap food, pizza or dessert? Pizza. Oh, man. Woo. Better okay. better Avenger, Captain America or Iron Man? Iron Man. It's close, though. Bigger disdain, emails or people that don't use GIFs in their text? As much as I'm a GIF is my love language, but I have to go with emails because I'm just tired of emails right now. Okay. Better pick me up. Buffalo brew coffee or pre-workout? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Crunk's going to hate me. if I, Chris, Coffee Chris would hate me if I don't say Buffalo brew, so I got to go Buffalo brew. <laughs> Even though I'm still in the megawatt lately. <laughs> if the media team could magically push their editing button and make it happen... What would be the task that they could do that with? Uh, the task. Um, they. Oh, what would they choose it as? Oh gosh, probably making like a bunch of 
of ad things for Mayhem Athlete. <laughs> like <laughs> promotional ads and stuff, but they 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 have a button in there. They do that all the time. That's what I was saying. Just push your button and edit it. I had uh, Kelsey from your staff help me out with these. So that's why these questions were so so specific to you. But there were some backstories in there that I was curious about, that being one of them. I was like, how does this come up on a day-to-day basis? And he's, she's like, like oh, he's, he says that all the time. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. All right, you passed. Those were all the questions, good answers. Um, thank you so much for doing this with us. It was awesome. Um, we really, we really, as Performance Plus, believe in what you guys are doing. Uh, this is a great partnership. If you guys aren't aware of it, uh, we've partnered together with Mayhem. Um, you can get a month of either one of our programs for free. Uh, we each have links to do that. They'll be posted in the show notes. You can go grab them there. Um, and then you can also get 15% off uh, with uh, a discount code uh, Mayhem Plus for life. So it's a super awesome way to put these two things together. You can get your accessories from Performance Plus and your fitness from Mayhem, and they mesh together perfectly, and uh, they will turn you into the next Richard Froning Jr., I believe, if you just do both things. Right. So, uh, guaranteed, guaranteed, one hundred percent. See, see all the fine print at the bottom. Pamela, do you have anything else you want to know about Jake or any other things you want to add? Um, I just hope that your three kids sleep tonight and one doesn't crawl out of the crib. That's my last um, final words of, you know, wishes for you. <laughs> yeah, me too. Us too. <sighs> Thank you, though. You guys have been an amazing yeah. family, and I do feel that a lot. So yeah, you guys are awesome. Jake, you have anything that you want people to know or questions for us? Oh, uh, nothing good off the top of my head. Nothing good enough to ask. I'm definitely going to talk to you about Iron Man, though, later. I can do it. I, Kelsey told me that and I was like, I could probably just talk to him for an hour about that. And Pamela would roll her eyes and be like, this is stupid. No, I went on a Marvel movie marathon. I told you in COVID with my youngest son, who's now in college. Um, and I'm like, totally love all Marvel. I, Captain America to me, I don't know. He has a special place in my heart. Both of you. That, I'm the biggest Marvel fan. Yeah. As, as big as it yeah. gets. Both those. Yeah. I'm, yeah. So good. When so I am, good. I, that's why I cannot wait to cross the line and say, I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like, so but that could be your sign off. Go for it. <laughs> this is Jake. He is Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should wear a mask and handstand walk across the finish line, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> that would be memorable. That's not a bad idea. That would be super memorable. Maybe everybody does it together. The whole crew. Probably. That's a good idea. I'm probably crawling at that point, but uh, I will finish. So 1659 crossing. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> <Heck> yeah. <laughs> right before the cut. Uh, well, cool. Thank you guys so much for listening. This was great. Uh, go check out the programs in the show notes, and we will see you next week.